Hello guys, welcome back to the show. Today I'll be taking you through a tutorial on how to test test functions using PyTest. I've already covered a tutorial on how to set up and write your first test using PyTest. So in this tutorial, I will not go over how to create a virtual environment and or install PyTest. I assume you know that already um, from the first video. Um, there are basically two ways to create a test file in PyTest. You can create a test file by using the test underscore something.py or something underscore test.py. So basically, I've got um, a master.py file created over here. I could create um, something like um, test underscore mat.py or I could create something like um, mat underscore um, test pi and um, they are all valid oops i think i made a mistake so instead of that i could make it like a dot pi and they are all valid names for um for test files in python using pytest i can delete this because i prefer the test underscore mass dot pi i'll make this a package so that i can import so again if you don't know what a package is make sure you check the first video i explained what the package is and why we need the init underscore pi inside of our source directory. Okay. For this tutorial, I've already created inside of the master pi module four functions, namely addition, subs, multiply, and raise error. So we're gonna look at some of the most commonly used flags in PyTest, how to skip test, how to use parameterized test functions, and how to handle errors and exceptions in your test. Let's start by looking at how to basically test these three, test the addition, test the subs subtraction, and test the multiply um, methods, and then we can go to the how to handle um, raise error. Whilst going through these three methods, I will go through some of the um, some of the flags that I personally use and I really like using PyTest. So we can import PyTest. Then I'll import the mass module, which contains the three functions that we would like to test. Like so, you write test in PyTest by using um, it has to start with the test underscore something, and usually for best practice. Um, usually use the name of the method that you're testing so I will define test underscore addition okay and then the addition will have results I'll call it and the results will be mat dot addition then I'll pass it two numbers let's say one and three okay so I can say assert Result is equal to four, and you run your test by running um, PyTest. So that is a good example of how simple PyTest is. Now, um, if I want to, for instance, if I was debugging and I wanted to print something um, in, whilst testing, obviously this is a simple example, so there's no point printing. But if I wanted to print something, let's say I wanted to print the value, so let's say print results. Right. If I run my test like this, um, PyTest, I will not be able to see what this is. Right. I I, I don't know what this is. Um, there are some flags that you can use in PyTest to to print out stuff um, inside of your test. So I can use the PyTest that's X flag, okay, and then it will print out four over here. Let's just print this next to it. Okay, and um, let's just do the same thing over here. And let me show you that that is the four. Okay, so you can see that that is the four that I have right here. Basically, you can use the S flag to log out values, print statements inside of your test whilst the test is running. If you want to get more information about your test, you can use the dash V flag, the verbose, um, they call it. So I could do PyTest dash v and i can get more information about the test let's say that i say let's say three just to fill and let me run it pi test without the verbose so this is what i get this is the information that i get without the dash v flag now let me use the dash v flag and see what information i get 
you can see I get a lot more stuff using the dash V flag than not using the dash V flag. So that is what you can use the verbose for and it's really good. I really love it. It's, it's amazing. Another thing that I can cover is parameterized test functions. As you can see, I'm asserting the results against one value, which is fine. But sometimes you might want to use more data. You might want to test the method against lots of data just to verify that the method works fine. What you can do to make this happen is to make your function a parameterized text function using the parameterized helper method that PyTest gives you. So pytest.mat.parameterize. Okay, so it takes in a string. And then the next one has to be um, a list. Um, and the string basically is what you is, is what basically you pass over here. So we want to replace this with the first value. Then we will give it one called the second value. And then lastly, the expected value. Since we have that, what we can do next is to provide it um, the expected value, the first value, the second value, and the expected value. And this has to be inside of a tuple. Okay. First one that I would like to use is, let's say, um, one, three, and then the expected value that I think will be the expected value that I'm waiting for will be four. Okay. I can go two, five, 100, five, and I can go one or five, minus 10, five. Having this, now what I can do is that I can put first value in here, then second value, and then the expected value okay so instead of saying maths dot addition i can replace this with the first value then use the second value and the expected value will be here so basically what is going to happen is that pytest will take the first value that one and we'll put it here we'll take three we'll put it here and then we'll assert that one plus three will give me four it will do the same thing for two put it here do the same thing for five, put it here, and then we'll set that two plus five will give me seven. So basically, this is an awesome way of basically having a lot of data for one test and then see if that the test is really right and that it passes. Okay, so let's see if it works right. Pi test that's V. And as you can see, it passed successfully. Now let's find out how we can skip test in Pi test. Uh, we can do that with a subs method. So let's create a test for the subs method. I'll create a variable called results, which you can say maths dot subs. I'll give it two parameters, five and then two. And I'll say assert is equal to three. Um, so what I've basically done is just to create a, um, a simple test method for this. And we can run it by just running pytest okay what we can do is that we can run just this test and how we can do that is by saying pytest then we give it the path to this test okay so we can say test which is this directory because let me show you so this directory so we can say pytest test go into this file so test underscore months the py and what I want you to test is the text underscore subs method. Okay, so PyTest run just this test. What I can do is to skip this test if I don't want to run it. So how can I skip the test? I can skip the test by giving it the at pytest.mark the skip method. And now when I run the test, you can see that this method has been skipped. You've learned how to um, use parameterized tests. You've learned how to skip tests. Now we're going to look at how to handle errors in PyTest. So the way to handle errors in PyTest is really simple. Okay. If I, if I do raise error, then I pass it something like three. When I run PyTest, it's going to fail because PyTest runs everything in here. If I run PyTest right now, see, I get an error. 
saying that sorry the input must be greater than five because pytest is running like it executes the, the mass.py model so to test this function what i can say is that find test underscore raise underscore error then i can say result is mass dot raise error i pass it an input of three just so we learn how to handle errors in PyTest. So how do we handle exceptions in PyTest? What we can do is say with PyTest. So we can use the with PyTest.raises, okay? And then we give it the error that we want, the value error that we want. And I think one thing that we need to do is that this has to come first. So with PyTest.raises has to come first, okay? And what you tell PyTest the raises is that anything that comes after you causes an error. We don't even need the assert. So we can just save results. And PyTest should just pass. We can even choose to just leave this out here. And go for something like that. And when we run the test, it passes. Okay, let me get rid of the skip because I don't want to skip it anymore so that we can run the full test. And that's sweet. So what is happening over here is that I'm saying that with pytest.raises value error, that is the error, that is the exception that I'm expecting, value error. And I'm saying that anything that happens after the pytest.raises should cause a value error. So the function that causes the error should be after pytest.raises. And that's how you work with errors and you handle errors in pytest. The next thing I would like to cover is pyfixtures. Pytest fixtures are functions that are run by pytest before and sometimes after the actual text function. So pytest will run the fixture before it runs this function and sometimes after it runs this function. I will make a full tutorial on pytest fixture later on on this channel. For now, let me show you a little example on the magic of pytest fixtures. So we can do something like um, define input. So we can mark this as pytest as fixture. Input is equal to um, 10 and then return input. Okay, now follow me carefully. So pytest will run this function before it runs this function, before it runs this function and before it runs this function. So it always runs this function anytime it runs a test. Okay, fixtures sometimes they are used for setup and teardown. So I've created a fixture over here called pytest.fixture. It is just an input method. Um, I could basically just say return 10. I don't need to create a variable. Um, okay, so we have like a simple input method that returns 10. What I would like to do now is that I would like to share this this input method across this function and then um, that function. I can create another addition method over here. So let's say define um, test. Now, what I would like to do over here is instead of passing in six or four or five, whatever, what I can do now is to pass it this input right here. Okay, then I can say input. Okay, so what, what have I done over here? So I've said that when this run, before you run this test, I would like to populate, you know, the input, the return value of this, which is 10. And then the second value will be five. I can do the same thing for um, add sub. So let me call this sub. I'll give it input, then I'll give it five. So I can say that that will be five. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just to run this test and then see what happens. Let me skip, let me um, let me skip all the other tests. So uh, PyTest, okay. So now if I run PyTest, oh, so what, what I did was that I forgot to, um, that's why it's bad practice to just copy and paste. So what I forgot to do is to use the right method, call the right method on the math model. So let's say that 
and you see everything is passing now so that is a taste of pytest i will do an in-depth tutorial and show you the advantages and some of the magic that the pytest feature does but it is really good you can use it for setups and set down you can use it for a lot of things thank you guys for watching and i hope you enjoyed the video see you again next time